Well, welcome back. The time has arrived. It's officially time for second breakfast. Local Richmond area chef Joe Sparata is here. He's going to share his delicious and easy to make pumpkin Jamelli pasta with us. Joe's one of the vendors for this year's 2013 Richmond Folk Feast, and we welcome him and Thomas Arrington to Virginia this morning. Thanks, gentlemen, for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. This is a really, really neat event. Everybody's really jazzed about the Richmond Folk Festival coming, but you guys have a preview. It's called the Feast. What's this about? We do. It's on Tuesday, October the 8th. We're having a preview of the festival grounds. We've got 10 restaurants coming with nine local chefs. Um, everybody's doing a dish. Uh, it's $100 for each ticket. The tickets benefit uh, Venture Richmond to keep the festival free for everyone to come. So Joe, one of the, a good friend and a great chef in Richmond, is going to come and do a dish to highlight what's going on in the season and what he's doing in his restaurant to show a snapshot of what's going on in the Richmond dining scene. This is a win-win for everyone. $100 a ticket is not small potatoes, but as you say, it's going for a great, great cause because bringing the Folk Festival to Richmond puts us on that national stage. It does. We're trying to share a little bit of the spotlight that the Folk Festival has brought through Venture Richmond. Uh, with the ticket price, it will be um, complimentary parking for the rest of the festival. So you can come on Tuesday, see what's going on, and then plan your, uh, your getaway for the rest of the weekend. Terrific. Yeah. Joe, I can't stand it any longer. This looks like it's going to be dynamite. What are we doing today? All right, so we have, uh, so we're going to be making some pumpkin jamelli. So this is our uh, pasta extruder. It does make a little bit of noise, but. Uh, That's the sound of success. That's what that is. That, that really is. So we're able to actually incorporate um, flavors like pumpkin into into our pasta. So it's just really dry ingredients plus um, plus actually using just a little bit of the puree from the pumpkin. So. Okay, so you've mixed the pumpkin right into that pasta. Right. That's where we're incorporating it. That's one of the great, uh, you know, great parts of this machine that we can pretty much make any kind of pasta. So it's really amazing machine. We're very lucky to have it at the restaurant. Homemade pasta being part of this, how long does it take to cook that when it's fresh? About three minutes. So it's a lot yeah, shorter really than fast. the dried pasta. So right now the whole dish is uh, so we have pumpkin. We have mm -hmm. some pumpkin butter, um, which is made from taking all the seeds and all the scraps from the pumpkin and cooking that down with butter. Okay. So really getting a lot more flavor into the dish. Um, and that's where we start. That's where we're going to start. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to put the whole thing in there. That'd be a little overwhelming. That huh? would be. That would be a little <laughs> rough. Yeah. But you can see how bright it is. Yeah. Really, uh, really packed with pumpkin flavor. Get some so pasta you're... cooking at the same time too. Okay. It's a really quick dish. In. How long does it take to really, well, I mean, I guess we got a little bit of a preview. You told me you were going to hire me. If I just come, I could I, work for food. Totally. Making Absolutely. Pasta. You can make pasta all day because that's what it seems like most of my days are filled with. Um, it's very therapeutic. It is. It, it is very therapeutic. But making a whole batch, so it's about a two kilo batch, takes 15 minutes. Okay. So that's two kilos of dry product, which makes. How much do you go through a day? Um, we're going through like six to eight kilos right. on a daily basis. So it's a lot of pasta. So some garlic and more pumpkin that's coming in? A little in. bit of garlic and pumpkin that's been cooked down a little bit. A little bit of uh, sorghum. Okay. Sorghum yeah. molasses. So that's... I keep reading about that. What's the difference? Uh, well, the difference is it's from the sorghum plant. So like similar to sugar cane, they, they actually press, press the, uh, the plant down and then wind up reducing it into a syrup. So it was really, really popular in, you know, 18 and early 1900s. And there's a lot of now small producers that are starting to make it in this country, which is really cool, but it's more, it's, a, it's very labor intensive, so mm -hmm. that's, it's also very expensive. Um, so just adding a little bit of kale now too. What an interesting combo of flavors. Some pecans. And then that's kind of all just, Caramelizing? Yep. Caramelizing down a little bit. This is vegetable stock. Man. So this is going to be what part of the dish? The base? This will be the base. This will help bind up the pasta. Uh, just salt and pepper as well. Okay. And Joe, you're excited about being a part of the feast? I really am, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely an honor to be a part of it. There are a lot of great chefs in town, and I'm happy to be it's always fun cooking with, you know, the chefs that I've become friends with in town. So it's very, 
very exciting. We talked um, about the folk festival bringing uh, you know Richmond on that national stage, but you guys, the chefs in town, are really uh, really already propelling us there. Yeah, we're, we've been getting a lot of really nice attention for uh, for heritage and for you know Richmond in general. You know, chefs like uh, friends of the Roosevelt and Jason over at uh, Comfort and Pasture, and it's been a lot of nice national stuff. Friends of the Magpie, Seco. So it's been. It's been really nice that Richmond's getting, I think, some much-deserved attention. Every time I open a magazine, I'm looking at my Southern Living at home, and then I see all the smiling faces right here from Richmond. It's and really pretty amazing, that's yeah. We're happy to be a part of it, so. So you just, about three minutes, that's already done. It's pretty much there, so. Just tossing now. Yum. We have some uh, Cabra La Mancha cheese, which is uh, a local cheese that's coming out of Maryland. We're going to finish it with. It's, uh, an aged goat cheese. Okay. So we'll try to plate it up here. And does that um, melt down, or does it just? No, end it's just up? just to kind of finish. Okay. Just to finish the dish up. Absolutely delightful. Now Carrie was really excited because in this incarnation, this would be a vegetarian spin. This if you wanted to yeah. in incorporate um, a meat as part of this, would you? Would I'd, you I'd do probably, that? I'd probably. Yeah, we do a lot of like house cured hams, and we'd probably do something like that, shaved mm -hmm. ham or. Uh, this is some pumpkin seed oil, oh. so this is all obviously very fall flavors, and we You're just really taken fall to a whole new level here. And then some of the uh, Firefly Farms Cabra La Mancha, which will melt down a little bit. Important to use those local ingredients. Yeah, we try to use. Uh, we work with lots of local farmers, like Victory Farms, and there's just a ton of great local farmers in Richmond. So. Did I move that before everybody had a chance to see how delicious it is? Joe, thank you for this magical oh. creation. Well, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. And Thomas, thanks for the preview of the feast. I'm excited. Now I'm going to feast on this, but you can enjoy the 2013 <laughs> Richmond Folk Feast on October 8th from 6 to 9 that evening at Historic Tredeker and enjoy the Folk Festival the weekend of October 11th through the 13th on the Historic Riverfront. The festival is free and open to everyone, courtesy of the benefactors that are going to that delicious feast. WTVR.com slash VTM is the place to go for all that information. 